Of folks means owning a house, right? That, that's that's a cornerstone of, of the American dream is owning a house. And it's not there right now for so many people, young people, because of inflation, runaway costs on mortgages and so forth. And how do you save money when everything's so expensive? Pete Sepp was the president of the National Taxpayers Union. Pete, welcome. Thanks for having me. No volume. For uh, the average rent, the average mortgage is double that, $3,500 the average mortgage now. It's unbelievable, Pete. How can people yeah. even survive? Yeah, it certainly is. And of course, the Wall Street Journal recently had an article showing the housing affordability index. It hasn't been this difficult for housing affordability since the mid 1980s. And of course, back then, boomers and others, well, they had better savings cushions than millennials and Gen Xers and Gen Zs do today. So it's a very tough proposition and government makes it much more difficult with taxes at closing, fees, all kinds of mandates that drive up the cost, Mandate. not only of buying your first home, but continuing to be able to make hmm. that mortgage. Right. So how do you get there? How do you, I mean, with, with what's going on in government, they've printed, what was it, $8 trillion, some ridiculous amount of money uh, from COVID yeah. and all, an additional $8 trillion put into circulation. Be like, well, they stopped printing the money, so inflation should be fine. That money's still in circulation, you nimwit. Uh, right. I mean, come on. The money's still out there, still circulating. And, and inflation is cumulative. But these yeah. networks, most people are financially Ill, Ill, illiterate. They don't understand how any of this works. But the fact of the matter is the dollar in my pocket, what can you buy for a dollar? You know, what, what can you buy for a dollar today, honestly? And people don't get it. You do. Not even a candy bar. No. Right. So yeah. how do we fix it, Pete? Well... Kamala Harris, of course, is going to come out with a big economic plan today, uh, trying to build 3 million new housing units, providing a $20,000 first-time home 25000 $25,000. For... $25, so more free, well, more free government money yeah. produced out of thin air, which would create more inflation, which would mean buying a house would be even more impossible. I mean, this, this yeah. is so dumb. Oh, and yeah. she's coming out with price controls. A la right. the Soviet Union and Venezuela, for God's sake. And not even left-wing economists think that rent controls or price controls actually work, except the few that she could find and put on her staff. Look, the real solution here is to cut taxes in the first place. The Home Builders Association says that something like $95,000 out of a $400,000 home is due to government mandates, uh, the failure to repeal import taxes on lumber and steel, closing costs that are mandated by government. In fact, 44% of the average closing costs that a homeowner faces is taxes. And the federal government is doing very little to encourage states and localities to cut those taxes. If they do that, that will do way more to provide homeowner affordability than anything that another $25,000 giveaway will at the federal level. Yeah, another 20, another, uh, I like the way, another $25,000 giveaway, Pete. And, yeah. and, and that's not going to help people afford houses, is it? It's just going to, no. what it's going to do is create a, a, a bigger problem for those that are working, trying to afford a house. I mean, that's right. all of this free, you know, print, 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 print. It is, um, it, it's inexcusable. Yeah, it is. And when you look at the longer term costs of home affordability, the fact that during the pandemic, and during the initial recession that uh, the lockdowns triggered, property taxes were rising inexorably over the last two years alone, 16%. Now, again, how are people going to be able to afford those costs? If government could control itself, then homeowners could get a break. 
but we don't see that from Kamala Harris right now or her policies. We recently filed comments with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They were looking into why closing costs were so high. Well, one of their big Einstein moments was, well, people are paying more points on their loan uh, to buy down the interest rates. Well, what caused the interest rates in the first place? Inflation. What helped to cause inflation? One big factor was government spending. If they'd cut back on the spending, we would not be in this spiral right now. Uh, exactly right. But they couldn't help themselves. They just, well, they were trying to buy votes. And here's the other thing that's happening. And people aren't even talking about this. But related to this, the fact that schools are cutting staff all over America because all that windfall of free, you know, monopoly money ran out. And they spent all this money on who knows what. Now they're cutting staff, teaching positions, uh, shortening hours, doing all sorts of terrible things to our schools. I mean, that's just another byproduct of this terrible behavior. Uh, Pete Sepp, president of the National Taxpayers Union, I'll give you the last word. We need to have an economic policy that stresses putting more money in people's pockets rather than having the government do it, actually letting people keep what they have earned, cutting back on regulations that are standing in the way of a robust economic recovery and good housing affordability. Kamala Harris is taking us in precisely the opposite direction, and it's going to lead to even more economic pain. You got that right. Pete Sepp. Well said. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Yeah. Can't, what, what, what can you buy for a dollar? 